Good morning, church. Welcome to the Sunday service, online service of Livingstone Methodist Church. So a reminder, today will be Holy Communion Sunday. So if you haven't gotten your Holy Sacraments ready, so do get it ready before we uh, start our Holy Communion later. So let us start the service with the opening prayer. We'll pray this together. God of love, in this time of worship, help us hear you claim us as your own, as you call us beloved. Help us claim our own identity as precious and honored, even in the face of voices that tell us differently. As we reaffirm our baptism this day, remind us who we are and whose we are. Strengthen us to do your work in this world, transforming our fragmented communities into your beloved community, which Jesus preached and lived. Amen. So let us stand and respond to the call to worship. A voice comes from heaven and calls us beloved. Water washes over us and we are changed. A voice tells us we are precious in God's sight. Our love, praise, and gratitude greet the Spirit who blesses us in baptism. Together, let, let us, us worship, worship the one, one who calls him from, from the water, water the, the God, God of love and transformation. transformation. Let us remain standing and Join us for the acts of praise today. We'll sing two songs as we gather and my chains are gone. As we gather, may your spirit work within us. As we gather, may we glorify your name. Knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship, we'll be blessed because we care. As we gather, may your spirit work within us. As we gather, may we glorify your name. Knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship, we'll be blessed because we care. We'll be blessed because we care. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is thy faithfulness. As we gather, may your spirit work within us. As we gather, may we glorify your name. Knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship, we'll be blessed because we care. We'll be blessed because we care. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. 
They are new every morning, new every morning. Great is Thy faithfulness, O Lord. Great is Thy faithfulness. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Save a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was grace that's all my heart to fear and grace my fears relieve how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed my chains are gone I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace, the Lord has promised is good to me, His word, my hope secures, He will my shield and portion me, as long as life endures, my chains are gone. I've been set free, my God, my Savior, has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace, my chains are gone. I've been set free, my God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace, the earth shall soon dissolve like snow the sun forbear to shine but God who called me here below will be forever forever mine. You are forever mine. Let us now invite Reverend Lucy Lee for the pastoral prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, we praise your name, for your name alone is exalted. Your majesty is above the earth and the heavens. Praise the Lord. 
Father, we thank you today for the gift of praise. We thank you for revealing yourself to us through your word, in your creation, and by your spirit. Father, I want to pray for your grace to be upon India now. Father, we are saddened to hear about the huge increase in the number of COVID-19 cases daily in India. Father, we pray for your mercy upon all the frontliners who are serving their nations. Father, grant them the strength as they serve. Help them to take extra precautions when they are at work. Father, I want to remember all the COVID-19 patients who are in hospitals and also people who are quarantined at home too. Father, help them not to give up easily. We pray that they will continue to persevere during this challenging time. And may you protect the elderly and the young ones who are living in the same household as those infected with the COVID-19 virus. Father, we want to remember people who are working, people with employment. Father, may you protect them as they go about meeting with people in the course of their work. We also want to pray for people who are required to travel by air for work purposes. Father, may you strengthen their hearts and minds as they travel and work. Help them to be able to find a balance as they juggle their work as well as looking into the needs of their family. When they are under stress, help them to be able to find rest in you. Father, teach them on surrendering their life to you because you love and care for each one of them. Father, we thank you that we are able to remember the death of your son, Jesus, who died for our sins on the cross. Father, prepare our hearts as we partake the communion later. Thank you, Father, for listening to our prayers. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us all stand for the affirmation of faith, taken from UMH 889. We'll respond to this accordingly. There is one God and there is one mediator, Christ Jesus, who came as a ransom for all, to whom we testify. This saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners and was manifested in the flesh vindicated in the spirit, seen by angels, proclaimed among the nations, believed in throughout the world, taken up in glory. Great indeed is the mystery of the gospel. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Let us now pray the offertory prayer together. All loving and gracious God, you have called us by name and love us with a fierce tenderness. In gratitude and praise, we offer our love in return, love for you and for your people. May our gifts strengthen your work in the world by creating the beloved community right here, right now. Amen. So before we go into the parish news, once again, we welcome all of you to join our online service this morning. And we have two items of parish news today. The first one will be the collection of offering and pledges. 
So please bank in or transfer funds online to our Livingstone Methodist Church Alliance Bank account. The account number is shown to you right now. And after you have done so, please WhatsApp the bank in slip or the transfer receipt to Mr. James Day. And for today, uh, we'll be collecting the Holy Communion offering. And the communion offering today will be dedicated towards Malaysian care. So as announced last week, Malaysian Care is a non-profit Christian NGO that established in Malaysia in 1979. And they are committed to serve the poor and the needy, irrespective of their religion and their ethnicity, and focus on empowering the communities. So please prayerfully consider to give to this mission generously. That will be all for the parish news. Let us stand for the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Please remain standing as we sing the hymn of preparation, UMH 545, The Church's One Foundation. The Church's One Foundation is Jesus Christ her Lord. She is His new creation. By water and the word From hand he came and sought her To be his holy bride With his own blood he bought her And for her life he died He left from every nation yeah, one or all the earth, the charter of salvation, one Lord, one faith, one birth, one holy name she blesses, her takes one holy food, and to one hope she presses. With every grace and joy, though with a scornful wonder, we see her so oppressed by schisms, rents asunder, by her justice dispersed. Yet saints, their watcher keeping their cry. Goes up how long, and soon the night of weeping shall be the morn of song. Meet all in tribulation and tumult of her war. She waits the consummation of peace forevermore to with the vision glorious her longing eyes are blessed and great church victory shall be the church at rest yet she on earth had union We've got the tree in one, and mystics with communion with those whose rest is one. Oh, happy ones and holy, Lord, give us grace that we, like them, the meek and lowly. On high mid
Please be seated. We'll now read the scripture lesson together, taken from John chapter 5, verses 15 to 47. Let us read this together. The man went away and told the Jewish leaders that it was Jesus who had made him well. So, because Jesus was doing these things on the Sabbath, the Jewish leaders began to persecute him. In his defense, Jesus said to them, My father is always at his work to this very day and I too am working. For this reason, they tried all the more to kill him. Not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own Father, making himself equal with God. Jesus gave them this answer. Very truly I tell you, the Son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing, because whatever the father does, the son also does. For the father loves the son and shows him all he does. Yes, and he will show him even greater works than this, so that you will be amazed. For just as the father raises the dead and gives them life, even so, the Son gives life to whom He is pleased to give it. Moreover, the Father judges no one, but has entrusted all judgment to the Son, that all may honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent Him. Very truly I tell you, whoever hears my word and, and believes him, him who sent me has eternal life and will not judge, but, but has crossed over from death to life. Very truly I tell you, a time is coming and has now come when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. And he has given him authority to judge because he is the Son of Man. Do not be amazed at this, for a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done what is good will rise to live and those who have done what is evil will rise to be condemned. By myself, I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just. For I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. If I testify about myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who testifies in my favor, and I know that his testimony about me is true. You have sent to John, and he has testified the truth. Not that I accept human testimony, but I mention it that you may be saved. John was a lamb that burned and gave life, and you chose for a time to enjoy his life. I have testimony with you than that of John. For the works that the Father has given me to finish, the very works that I am doing, testify that the Father has sent me. And the Father who sent me has himself testified concerning me. You have never heard his voice, nor seen his form, nor does his word dwell in you, for you do not believe the one he sent. You study the scriptures diligently because you think that in them you have eternal life. These are the very scriptures that testify about me, yet you refuse to come to me to have life. I do not accept glory from human beings, but I know you, 
I know that you do not have the love of God in your hearts. I have come in my Father's name, and you do not accept me. But if someone else comes in his own name, you will accept him. How can you believe since you accept glory from one another, but do not seek the glory that comes from the only God? But do not think I will accuse you before the Father. Your accuser is Moses, on whom your hopes are set. If you believed Moses, you would believe me, for he wrote about me. But since you do not believe what he wrote, how are you going to believe what I say? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So today we have Reverend Lucy that will be sharing with us on a sermon title, Stand Firm. Good morning to you, brothers and sisters in Christ. During the China Boxer Rebellion of 1900, the rebels found eight Christians having Bible study in a house with a Bible place in the middle. They were told their lives would be spared if they spit on the Bible or be shot if they refused to do so. Being terrified by the death threat, Seven adult students spitted on the Bible and were allowed to go free. However, the eighth student, a seven-year-old girl, refused to commit the disrespectful act. Kneeling beside the Bible, she cleaned it and kissed the Bible and then stood up to face the rebels' firing squad. She was killed instantly. Friends, when we are enjoying good health and wealth in life, it is easy to stand firm in our faith when we are in our comfort zone. But what if it is something that you have to pay a price for or something that you hold dearly to but needed to be sacrificed? Will you stand firm in your faith still? Today, we will continue to explore further as Jesus faced the challenges in his ministry in the second part of John chapter 5 from verses 15 to 47. Let us go to God in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you that we can gather online to worship you. Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. As the guardians of the faith, the members of the Jewish Sanhedrin meant that the religious ruling council had the responsibility of investigating new preachers and teachers who appear in the land. Should they be some false prophets who will lead the people astray? In John chapter 1, verse 19, they had looked into the ministry of John the Baptist and more recently had been investigating the ministry of Jesus. In Luke chapter 4, verses 31 to 37, when Jesus had healed a demoniac on the Sabbath, the Sanhedrin was already suspicious. Point number one, the controversy. Let us read John chapter 5, verses 16 to 18 together. And this, and this was, was why, why the, Jews the Jews were persecuting, persecuting Jesus, because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. But, but Jesus answered them, My father is working until now, and I am working. This was why the Jews were seeking all the more to kill him, because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was even calling God his own father 
making himself equal with God. He was a man who was paralyzed and had been dependent on others for 38 years. Now he is healed. He is able to walk. He is able to support himself. And he is able to contribute to society. The Jewish leaders, however, did not prosecute the man who was healed, but they persecute Jesus. Why? Because Jesus healed someone on the Sabbath. The persecution is tied not simply to the offense that Jesus healed the man on the Sabbath, but to Jesus' habit of doing such things. Another charge against Jesus has to do with blasphemy. When they confronted Jesus with his unlawful conduct, he simply replied that he was doing only what his father was doing. When Jesus said, my father, instead of the usual our father used by the Jews, he claimed to be equal with God. The offense is not anchored in Jesus' claim to have a unique relationship with God. The offense is anchored to the nature of Jesus' self-defense in light of Sabbath charges. The Jewish leaders instantly understood his claim and they changed their accusation from that of Sabbath breaking to blasphemy because Jesus claimed to be God. The penalty for such blasphemy was death. It is here that the official persecution of Jesus began, built up to his crucifixion. The Jewish leaders could not deny his claims, so they tried to destroy him and get him out of the way. They hated Jesus without a cause. They ignored the good deeds that Jesus performed for the helpless and hopeless and centered their attention on destroying him. Both the hummingbird and the vulture fly over our nation's deserts. All vultures see is rotting meat because that is what they look for. They thrive on that diet. But hummingbirds ignore the smelly flesh of dead animals. Instead, they look for the colorful blossoms of plants. Vultures live on what was on the past. They fill themselves with what is dead and gone. But hummingbirds live on what is. They seek new life. They fill themselves with freshness and life. Friends, which are you? Voucher or hummingbird? Point number two, the claims. In response to the Jewish leader accusations, Jesus claimed to be equal with God. Let us read John chapter 5, verses 19 to 20. So, so Jesus, Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees the Father do. For whatever the Father does, that the Son does likewise. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself is doing. And greater works than these will he show him, so that you may marvel. Instead of denying their accusation, Jesus endorsed it. Jesus describes his work as shelter under the same divine prerogatives as when God works on the Sabbath. If today a man made this kind of a claim, we will conclude that he was joking or mentally disturbed. Jesus was certainly not insane. And there is every evidence that he was serious 
when he spoke these words. Jesus is connected to the Father. His activity is never independent or self-initiated, but always dependent, deriving its purpose from his Father's will. Jesus claimed to be one with his Father in his works. He did nothing of himself, but only which the Father was doing. The Father initiates, sends, commands, commissions, grants. The Son responds, obey, performs his Father's will, receives authority. Moreover, the Son does not simply draw inspiration from the Father, but imitates him tirelessly and successfully. God's word and Jesus' word are one and the same. And so to embrace is to embrace the other. God loves Jesus and has delegated to him ultimate authority. Jesus made himself equal with God because he is God. This is the theme of John's Gospel. In this paragraph, Jesus spoke about four different resurrections. Let us read John chapter 5, verses 24 to 25. Truly, truly, truly I, say I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Truly, truly, I say to you, an hour is coming, and is now here, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. Jesus was described the resurrection of lost sinners into eternal life. For a second time, Jesus introduced his words with the solemn, truly, truly, I say to you, more than 20 times in John's gospel, that we will find Jesus using this form of address. It is as though he was saying, pay attention to this. What I'm about to say is important. Jesus is teaching what life and judgment really mean. Jesus' authority over the Sabbath leads now to authority over eternal life. For Jesus to claim to have power to raise the dead was a blasphemous thing in the eyes of the Jewish leaders. They gave that power to God alone. As far as the gospel records are concerned, Jesus had not yet raised anyone from the dead. So to make this claim was to invite even more opposition. The lost sinner is as lifeless and helpless as a corpse. The lost sinner is helpless to save himself, and he certainly can't give himself life. How are dead sinners raised from the dead? By hearing God's word and believing on God's Son. Jesus healed the paralyzed man at the pool by his word. Let us read John chapter 5, verse 26 together. For as the Father, Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself. These verse is talking about the resurrection of our Lord himself. Our life is derived, but his life is original in himself. The grave could not hold him because he is the prince of life. Jesus laid down his life and then took it up again because Jesus has life in himself. He can share that life with all who will trust him. Let us read John chapter 5. Verses 28 to 29, 8. 
do not, do not marvel, marvel at this, for an hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come out those who have done good to the resurrection of life. These verses are referring to the future resurrection of life when believers are raised from the dead. Keep in mind that resurrection is not reconstruction. It does not simply imply that God puts the pieces back together again. The resurrection body is a new body, a glorified body, suited to the new heavenly environment. Death is not the end for the believer, nor will he live in heaven as a disembodied spirit. God saves the whole person, and this includes the body. This resurrection of life will take place when Jesus Christ returns. Let us read John chapter 5, verse 29b. And those, and those who, who have, have done, done evil to the resurrection of judgment. This verse is referring to the resurrection of condemnation. This resurrection involves only the lost and it will take place just before Jesus Christ ushers in the new heaven and the new earth. The Father has committed all judgment to the Son and has given him the authority to execute judgment. One day, all the day regardless, small and great, are to stand before Jesus Christ. Today, Jesus Christ is the Savior, but one day he shall sit as the judge. The Jews would know the title Son of Man. When the Jews are reading the book of Daniel, and they would know that by using it, Jesus was claiming to be the Messiah and the judge. Believers will be given resurrection body so that they might reign with Christ in glory. Unbelievers will be given resurrection bodies, but not glorified bodies, that they might be judged and then suffer punishment in those bodies. Bodies that were used for sin will suffer the consequences of that sin. The fact that Jesus has the authority to raise the dead is proof that he is equal with the Father, and therefore he is God. Jesus had just healed a man who had been paralyzed for 38 years. He was not only appreciated by the leaders for this miraculous healing, but they were concerned that their rules had been broken, their authority challenged, and their positions were in danger. So they began trying to kill Jesus. Jesus makes ultimate claims for himself in the Gospels. No way in obvious in John chapter 5. It is not simply that Jesus is doing the Father's business that makes him unique. It is that Jesus has a relationship with the Father that goes beyond anything humanity has seen before. When Jesus makes an absolute claim in John chapter 5, he is to invite persecution. But our Lord was not intimidated by the accusations of the religious leaders. John's gospel is clear that no disciple will be exempt from persecution if he or she is following the Lord. Jesus was judged 
as a blasphemer because Jesus helped someone on the Sabbath. The incriminating destination of someone who trampled on pure religious truth. And he continues to stand firm. Jesus was crucified when he disclosed about his identity and the same true to Jesus' followers. And they continue to stand firm. Friends, ask yourselves, am I willing to be labeled as a blasphemer to the religious of my day when my hour comes? Am I ready to be judged and expelled when facing the social shame in public because I am holding on to an absolute faith in Jesus? I pray that John chapter 5 that speaks of Jesus' life will greatly encourage you and I when we are living under serious threat. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for the life of Jesus who taught us to be firm when we are facing challenges in our life. Father, help us to stand firm in our faith and to turn away from things that we should not cling to so dearly in our life. Father, use us to be a blessing to others around us. Grant us the courage when we are uncertain or fearful in witnessing our faith to others. Father, we thank you for the work of the Holy Spirit who dwells in us. May your spirit continue to stir our hearts towards you and your will. Thank you for listening to our prayers. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us stand for invitation. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us respond the confession and pardon together. Merciful God, God. We, we confess, confess that, that we have, have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have, we have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us spend some time before the Lord. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Together. Glory, Glory to, God. to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right to give, give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing. Always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join your unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, deliver us from slavery and death, and make with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you. He brought the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one with a ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honour and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, can I invite the head of the household to serve the communion elements to all the family members? If you are alone at home, kindly get ready the communion elements. When you are ready, we will partake the elements together. The body of Christ given for you. Let us partake the bread together. The blood of Christ shed for you. Let us partake the cup together.
will now collect the second communion offering. So the collection method will be the same as our offering. And the account number is shown to you right now on the screen. Let us now stand for the closing hymn, Standing on the Promises. Standing on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let His praises ring Glory in the highest I will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of Christ my Savior Standing, standing I'm standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail By the living word of God I shall prevail Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing, standing I'm standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises of Christ the Lord Bound to Him eternally by love's strong cord Overcoming daily with the Spirit's sword Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing, standing I'm standing on the promises of God Standing on the promises I cannot fall Listening every moment to the Spirit's call Resting in my Savior and my all in all Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God. Let us stand for benediction. Teach us to know that our worship is only beginning. May we love others as God has first loved us. In all that we see, hear, and take into our hearts, may the love of Christ be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen, Amen, Amen. Our service this morning has ended. Thank you again for joining us and have a blessed Sunday and we'll see you next week.